guys you're welcome back to my channel my name is Dami and you're watching Dami Dimension if you're new on this channel hit that red button below to subscribe because there is always something new coming up on this channel in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make a male African wear if you have any question at all regarding this tutorial you can leave a comment for me and I'll be sure to answer your question without further ado let's jump straight into this video so the first thing I'm going to be doing is to cut out the size of the fabric I'm going to be needing. So what I'm going to do is to measure a span of the uh, circumference, that's the chest circumference or whichever part is the biggest circumference in uh, the top you're making. Measure the circumference like this and the length of your booba like this and then cut the rectangular piece out the circumference of the chest is 21 inches then i added 10 inches to that that gives me 31 so here as you can see i have 31 inches okay the length of the top is 16 16 plus 4 gives me 20 so that here i have 20 inches so then i cut this out this is what i'm going to be working with for the body of my top so in order to get started you need to fold this in half and after folding it in half go ahead and cut it into two so that you can have half of it for your front and the other one for the back So the next thing you should do is to fold uh, each piece of this fabric into two separately like this. So after folding them into two, we should take note that the front side of the uh, male shirt is usually shorter than the back. And for a young boy, it, uh, the difference in length is usually between two and a half inch to uh, two three quarter of an inch. I'm going to be cutting two and a half inches away from uh, the front panel. So the next thing is to place the two pieces on top of each other. So you can see the... Uh, the length difference now That is where I'm going to be marking out my neck Line which is the next thing I'm going to do The neck depth is going to be two inches and The neck width is going to be about uh, one three quarter or, or one and a half Okay So I'm marking that now So the same width you took here, which is about uh, one and three quarter, take it also here on the back panel. And for the neckline of the back side, I'm going to be coming down by just one inch. And from there you can go ahead and draw your curve. You can use your free hand. The color of my chalk is blending too much with the color of the fabric. But I hope you can see that. So this is what I have. And this is what I have here. The next thing for us to do is to measure the shoulder. And the shoulder measurement for this top is uh, 9 inches. 9 inches divided by 2 is 4.5 and I'm going to be adding 1 inch seam allowance to that. And that's going to give me 5.5. For my back panel, I'm going to measure 5.5 and mark. And the front panel also 5.5 and mark. So the next thing you should uh, derive the shoulder slope and 
we are going to be coming down by three quarter of an inch because it's just for a child if you are sewing for an adult you can come down by one inch okay so on the on the back panel i come down by three quarter and also on the front panel i'm coming down by three quarter of an inch okay so from that point you should connect a slant line to uh, the edge of your neck width both on the front and the back panel So the next thing for us now is to measure out our armhole and in order to get the starting points of the armhole you know that this is not the regular way we, we measure our basic fabric this is a male top so we need to know where the armhole is going to start here and in order to get that remember that the difference in length between the front and the back panel is 2.5 inches which is this that we have here so out of that 2.5 inches half inch is for joining so we are left with two inches then we are going to divide that two inches by two which is going to give us one so then we are going to place the one inch starting from this shoulder line right here so you place your one inch on your tape root on this shoulder line and then that gives us where the uh, arm hole is going to start from so you see this point right here on your back panel that is where you're going to start measuring the arm o. the arm o i'm going to be using is 10 inches so 10 divided by 2 gives me 5 then i'm going to measure my 5 from this point straight down okay and that is my 5 inch point And from this ammo point, we are going to draw a straight line. On that line is where we are going to place our chest measurement. So the next thing you should do is to also draw a straight line from uh, your shoulder slope down to the ammo. It seems my, my uh, tailor's chalk is really not showing. I'm trying to see if another color is going to be better. I don't know. Maybe this uh, is even worse. So bear with me, guys. I'm so sorry. Just try to follow my uh, descriptions. So the next thing to do now is to place the chest measurement on this line. The chest measurement is... 21 inches 21 inches divided by 4 gives me 5.25 and I'm going to be adding 2 inches of seam allowance That's going to give me 7.25 So I mark 7.25 like so on that line So from here now we can draw our ammo curve And in order to draw the ammo curve, we are going to get the midpoint of this line From this point that we marked here initially if you remember the point is on this back panel so from that point to this chest line get the midpoint that is my midpoint and from there come in by half of an inch in order to draw your ammo curve so and that is the point right there so then you are going to you are going to be connecting your curve this way from this uh, chest point that we marked all right we connect a curve to this new point that we have derived and go all the way up to connect to this uh point of the back panel so let me do that so that you can see okay so you see so the next thing for us to do now is to get the waist line. In order to get the waist line, from that reference point that we marked on the back panel, uh, keep in mind that from that point, that is where your shirt is going to fold over to the front because the shirt of men usually uh, fold over to the front. The joint 
of the shoulder is not directly on the shoulder it's a little bit towards the front so that is where it's going to fold from so from that point you are going to take a measurement of 8.5 downwards and that is going to serve as your waistline so go ahead and draw a horizontal line on that point like so okay and for your hip line from that same reference uh, reference point measure 12 and a half inches that is going to serve as your hip line so draw a horizontal line from that point okay the chest and the hip of males are usually taken as the same so here we add 7.25 also take your 7.25 here and we can take the 7.25 here but just for you to give it a little bit of shape i'm going to be taking off the uh, 0 0.25 and measure only 7 inches on the waistline so then we can connect these three points now And then you can just flush this to the side, like so. Alright, and that's all about the marking. We can now go ahead and cut out our shape. So we are cutting along this line. This way for the front and the back. We cut also this way. Okay. the neckline of the front so after cutting your fabric should look like this this is the back panel and here is the front panel and this is how it's going to fold over yeah okay so for the sleeve I'm going to be making use of this uh, plain fabric and what I'm doing is I folded my fabric into two like this okay so after folding your fabric in half like this then go ahead and measure your sleeve length uh, my sleeve length is going to be four inches four inches plus half inch uh, to join the sleeve to the body that's 4.5 and then I'm also going to take two inches to turn up the sleeve opening so that's going to give me 6.5 so i'm going to measure my 6.5 here and i'm also going to measure it here and connect with a straight line all right so the next thing i'm going to take the same measurement i took for my armhole for the for the body if you remember i took I took five inches from my reference point here to the arm old line so i'm going to take that five inches here also and i'm going to be adding half inch of seam allowance to that and place a mark there like so so from this line you're going to be taking three inches downward and place a mark like so at three inches then i'm going to transfer the three inches also on this side so I can get a perfect straight line so go ahead and connect that into a straight line so the next thing is for you to measure your uh, round sleeve and the round sleeve for this top is 9 inches 9 inches divided by 2 because this fabric is folded in half that gives me 4.5 then I'm going to be adding about half of an inch of seam allowance to that and that's going to give me 5 inches so I'm marking my 5 inches here 
like so. And next, the same measurement you took here, which was five and a half, go ahead and transfer it on this line. So take five and a half on this line as well. Okay? So next thing, you should connect a straight line from this point to the point of your round sleeve. Unfortunately, my camera stopped recording when I was uh, drawing this curve. But if you don't understand anything at all about this sleeve, just check out my video on how to make a basic sleeve pattern. You will uh, understand it better because I made a very detailed explanation in that video. I'm going to provide a link to that video in the description box below. So please check that out. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do now is to cut out this shape. So after cutting it out, I'm going to place the pattern on my leftover fabric and cut out the second sleeve. But if you want to avoid that step, you can uh, fold your fabric into four from start. So now I'm going to be cutting the yoke for the top and I'm going to be making use of this plain fabric. So what you want to do is to grab the back panel and place it on this fabric and then cut out the upper part. I'm going to show you that shortly. Okay, so here is my back panel. I want to cut out the same thing as this upper part, but I'm going to stop uh, somewhere around here. I'm going to be taking six inches. And here is the yoke for the back side after cutting it out. So as you can see, it matches perfectly with the uh, upper part of the back side. And this is meant to make the upper part a bit more stronger. I also went ahead and cut another one for the front. I'm going to use this one to pipe in the neck of the front. I also went ahead and cut a placket, which is 8 inches, 8 inches by 4.5 centimeters. Okay, so stay tuned so that you can see how I'm going to put all of this together. So for the stitching part of this uh, top, the first thing I'm going to be doing is to grab my interfacing and determine how low I want the neckline slit to be. Yeah. I'm going to be making it about 4 inches deep, so I am going to... mark my four inches like so then you should uh, determine the center point okay so from my center point that I've marked I'm going to be taking quarter of an inch to the right of that center notch and quarter of an inch to the left I'm going to be drawing a straight line from those two points to meet the length of my uh, next slit that I've drawn here. Okay, so this is to indicate the part I'm going to be sewing on. So the next thing to do now is to grab your front piece. So grab your front panel and so I did this marking on the wrong side. So make sure you do it on the wrong side. So on your, uh, grab the front panel, right side facing the right side of your interfacing like this. Make sure the shoulder and neckline and the ham all are aligned. So align them together, then you are going to stitch by half of an inch around your neckline. When you get to this line, stitch along this line down like this and go like this. So I am done stitching around. I forgot to tell you that you should hem the down part before you stitch. But yeah, I did that. I hem this interlining. And the next thing I'm going to do now is to cut this part open all the way down from, from the middle. I stopped just at about quarter of an inch before I get to my horizontal stitch there. Okay, so next thing, I'm going to notch.
the reason for notching is to have clean and sharp shape of your neckline by the time you turn it out okay so now I'm going to turn it out Okay, so here is it after turning it out. Then I'm going to give it a good press now. So I also cut a placket and I'm going to be ironing a stay on the wrong side. Once I'm done ironing the stay on the wrong side, I'm going to turn, turn the placket right side to right side like this. And I will stitch it like this. After that, then I will fold it this way and stitch like this also. So now I have stitched by half of an inch all the way down. Then I am going to turn it this way and let me show you what I'm doing. So then I'm going to do this. You see? Then I will sew it like this. Then I will turn it out. I'll bring it inside out through this place. Here is it after sewing. I'm going to be turning it right side out using my scissors. So you can use your scissors or the turning tool to Make sure the sharp, the corners are sharp enough. And yeah, and I'm going to give it a good press now. There are several means of making a placket, but for this design, this is the style I'm going for. Next, I'm going to sew here all the way down. I'm going to tell you why. The sewing uh, is not to, is not meant to attach anything together, but I'm just going to place that stitch straight down here then i'm going to tell you the reason why i'm doing that and this is the stitch i'm talking about so now you want to grab your front panel again grab your front panel again and place your placket on it at the center point this is where we have opened, so just make sure you have this one aligned at the center. All right, then I am going to pin it down in place. And after pinning, you should sew you should attach it down on this edge. Make sure you maintain the same spacing of your uh, seam here. On this side as well and also on this side. But when you're sewing on this down part, make sure you fold it in. So, and just to let you know that I have the open part of this placket at the down part and the sewn part is at the upper part here. So I can have this place neat and here I can fold it in however I want that. So stitch like this and like this. And now to the reason why I had this stitch. By the time I make this stitch here, it's going to just, uh, it's meant to just balance up the look. Okay, because if you have the stitch on this side and you don't have it on this side, it may look funny, but I just want it to look uh, balanced or look more or less like a design. So that is why I had that stitch there. And here you go, your placket is ready. And you can go ahead and attach uh, press buttons here. Okay, you can see how flat that is looking at this point. All right, so the next thing to do now is to grab your back panel and the yoke of the back side. So you're going to be placing the wrong side of your fabric and the right side 
of your uh, placket facing each other. Okay, wrong side to right side facing each other. Then you are going to stitch along the neckline. And now I am done stitching the neckline together. Then I'm going to notch it around. Cut it really close to your stitches, but make sure you don't cut off your stitches. Okay, so once that is done, you should turn it to the other side and you should have something like this. And then I'm going to give that a good press and show you guys. Okay, so the next thing you should do now is to first make sure this one is uh, up. Bring it up like that, then grab your front panel and place it wrong side to wrong side to the back panel. So this is my wrong side and this is the wrong side of the back. And we need to join the shoulder. So I'm going to be picking the shoulder of the front panel, pick the shoulder of the back panel, then pick the shoulder. You know this is the shoulder of your yoke, then you should kind of use it to wrap around the two of them together and I'm going to pin it and stitch. You do the same thing to the other side as well. Okay? The shoulder of this one, the shoulder of this and wrap it around and stitch. Okay, by the time we do that and we turn this one around, the inside of, of our project is going to be free of raw edges. We are not going to see any raw edges. By the time we move on, you will see what I'm talking about. So now I am done joining the shoulders. Then I am going to turn it. Alright. So the next thing now, you should top stitch this part. So you are going to top stitch the yoke. And keep in mind that whenever you are top stitching, Make sure you sew it as straight as possible because you don't want anything to mess up your work. Okay, so you remember that we made the back side longer than the front when we were cutting. In order to make them equal now, this is what you're going to do. Turn it to the front and put the two ends together and also match match the um, armhole together and just let this part fall so you can see that it's not falling directly on on the shoulder seam it's not falling this way if you fall it this way it's going to be longer at the back so just make sure you put them together match the armhole as well and the shoulder is going to fall a little bit forward and that is how it should be because male wears usually fall a bit forward at the shoulder level okay so we are going to do this at the wrong side so we can stitch the sides and attach the sleeve if you want you can attach your sleeve first or you can sew the the side seam first so i'm going to be notching this part just for reference purpose in case i want to attach my sleeves all right, so now I'm going to be attaching my sleeve first. So now I'm going to be fixing the sleeve. I'm going to place the right side of my sleeve to the right side of the body, matching the two notches, the center point of the sleeve and the center point of the shoulder, which is the notch that I made earlier. So now I'm going to pin it starting from that point. Then I'm going to be pinning it round this way. All right, and here also I'll pin it, and I will do the same thing to the other sleeve as well. Once that is done, then I'm going to stitch the sleeve on. So once that is done, you should have something like this. All right, and the next thing you should hem the sleeves now. Right, so after hemming the sleeve, you can also hem the down part. Fold it twice and stitch. Fold twice and stitch. 
after hemming the down part now it's time to combine the two sides together all right so bring them together like this so i'll be sewing starting from the sleeve all the way down but i'm going to stop um leaving about four inches so i'll sew this way and stop somewhere here do the same thing to the other side next thing i am going to roll up this side and stitch it straight do the same thing on the other side so go ahead and repeat the same thing on the back side roll and stitch and roll it and stitch and once that is done here is the finished look of this top you can see how it's looking so perfect and neat as usual and here is the back side as well like i said this is a top for a little boy but if you want to make it for an adult it's exactly the same thing you can re you can uh you know follow the same process for an adult top as well so yeah that's the end of this video i mm -hmm. hope you enjoyed it i hope you find it helpful somehow if you have found it helpful please remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this every week i upload sewing tutorials like this on my channel if you're new i'm telling you that so you should know and if you're not new you know how we do it thank you so much for your support so far share this video with your sewing mates and i hope to see you in my next video and until then Bye-bye.